Welcome Hunters. Zach Bagans and the guys go to Utah to search for skinwalkers. They use a drone the size of an F-16. They try their hand at free snacks and they make Jose cry. Details in just a sec. Welcome back, Haunters. So first, let me start with saying welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you guys for all the comments. And if you get a chance, please share. I don't get much of a bump from the algorithm from YouTube. Anything you can do to assist the channel is greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. So before we get started here, I just want to make a few caveats. Just so everyone knows, fair warning that I'm not scripted. I am freestyle. Oh my. All right, now that you've been properly warned, I just want to make sure everyone understands with this episode, they're dealing with things that I am not real familiar with as far as the lore goes and the traditions. So I am not an expert on Skinwalker lore. I'm not an expert on Navajo traditions or practitioners or any of their rituals. All the information that I looked up, that I've Googled, that I will state today is coming straight from Google. It's a superficial search at best. I, ju I just googled it uh and I maybe Google may be incorrect the information I get may be incorrect so if anyone out there is familiar with this subject as I go through the video I make my comments please comment let all the haunters know enlighten us please let us know if there's something that we need to know that was not accurate or if you have a different opinion please let me know I'm H he doesn't know what he's talking about. Just another thing, too, so everyone understands that when I do these commentaries, this is summer content because the weather where I live in the summertime is dreadful. It's raining. It's storming. It's just very difficult to take your equipment out in the field and not get hit by lightning or drenched. or just It's just dreadful outside. Humidity is 100% almost every single day for a few months. So I do commentaries. Check the weather. It is hot. I just want to I just want to let everyone know that my comments in these videos are meant to be lighthearted. I'm not trying to be overly critical. I'm actually a super nice guy. I, I'm not trying to bash anyone's favorite um, ghost hunter or any of that sort of thing. So I just want to let you guys know this is all in good fun. He's really a nice guy. So don't take things too seriously. Don't get yourselves all worked up because we're just trying to have a little fun here. I don't think any of us watch these shows to confirm or deny our belief in the supernatural. We're just basically looking for entertainment. So we're going to move forward with the video. And basically today, we're ju I'm just going to make some observations regarding the episode and the video. And then we're going to jump in the Reddit to see what the opinions are there. And then I'm going to read some comments from the last two or three videos. So leave a comment. Perhaps we'll feature it in the next video. And we'll highlight your comment. All right. So that being said, that out of the way, all the housekeeping. Let's jump into the topic of today's video. All right, Ghost Adventures, Skinwalker Invasion. Let's start at the very beginning so everyone knows where this episode is taking place. It is in Torrey, Utah. It's about four hours from the Skinwalker Ranch. Apologies, I'm looking at my notes here i watched the episode i reviewed it like i've told you guys before i go back and i try to review the episode now i took notes my notes were about i don't know if you guys can see this let me drop this for a moment i took this here um i took thousands and thousands of notes it's not going to catch it but anyway so i took lots of notes because this is a very long episode and then when i tried to do the video off of the notes uh, my timer got us up to about an hour and I was like, nope. So we're just going to go over. We're just going to briefly touch on some of the um, events of the episode and then we'll move on. So, but where they are, they're in Torrey, Utah. It's about four hours from the Skinwalker Ranch and about the same distance from Las Vegas. So as we established, Zach doesn't like to fly. So this is well within driving distance of Zach's home. They're going to be investigating the Chuck Wagon Inn, the general store and deli and two nearby buildings, a supposedly House of Horrors 
and a 1800s power plant and we'll get we'll get to that in a moment and I checked the website basically to see if there's any evidence of people posting about a haunted experience at the chuck wagon I did not find any but again it was a superficial ch check I didn't go deep in uh, down the rabbit hole I did find out that they are seasonal so Zach says in the episode that there was nobody else there but them and it looks like they run from July to December it looks like it's very cold during the episode so they were probably there January February and it's also like I think there was a little snow on the ground but I'm not sure it seems to be a three-star review hotel um, it's got Wi-Fi cable and it's like an average $134 a night to stay there um, it is near I think it's claim to fame is it's near the entrance of the Capitol Reef State Park and they offer camping canyoneering and hiking and it's basically in the desert is what it looked like to me from the Google Earth images so I'm not real familiar with canyoneering I'm, I'm familiar with caving now I could Google this but I don't want to I want you guys to tell me what canyoneering is and those that may be involved with it let me know what that is and what it entails and if it's only in a desert environment can you I don't know that there's canyons anywhere else, right? I don't know. Anyway, guys hit me up. Let me know what that is. All right. What is it? What? So, that is basically where they are and what they're going to be doing, investigating the chuck wagon, the deli, on these two buildings. And they're going to look for evidence of these skinwalkers that supposedly are in, uh, encroaching on this property. So, I'm going to just rapid fire some highlights of this episode now. Because if not, again, like I said, it's a long episode. We'll be here all day. I don't want to do that. So the highlights of the episode for me was basically the House of Horrors and the power plant. Now, Zach says in the intro that they brought him to this place so he'd have a nice neutral location to do his, do his intro. And they all experienced some sort of mass um, vision or premonition of a Native American. They also said they found some Navajo artifacts on the ground. So they believe that there's something going on as far as these two buildings. Now, one of them is an abandoned, is an abandoned cabin. And I did think I found that cabin. It says it was abandoned in 1974. And a woman named Dicey Chestnut lived there probably most of her life. It didn't have any indication of it being haunted or anything that would make it a house of horror. I don't know, but we all know that when buildings sit abandoned, people go in and do bad things. So maybe that's what they're picking up on. Also the power plant, you can see in the investigation plainly that there's like a rail car track on the ground. There's a bolt, there's a um, block and tackle um, apparatus so they can lift like a man lift in there. So it does look like there's some industrial use there, but I didn't really see any evidence of a like, like a power plant. Now, I did look up in 1881, Salt Lake City had a coal-fired power plant. So it was right around the late 1800s when they had electricity in these areas. So maybe it was an old coal-fired plant there at one time. I don't know. So, but moving on, they do investigate those two buildings. So moving on, they, of course, they do their normal interviews with the um, family and the people involved in uh, their experiences and they share that with Goat Adventures. Now, a couple of them were kind of awkward looking. I don't know. It was just, it just seemed a bit off and it looked a little scripted. You'll see what I'm talking about with the flute, but let's just go on by that. Then they go and they meet the owner of the Chuck Wagon, which I believe their name with the Austins. I'm not even going to go back and check because it's really not relevant to the episode. But I think they were the Austins was the name of the, the couple that owned the Chuck Wagon. And they showed some... They showed some surveillance footage. Now, I'm not a big fan of surveillance cameras. The compression is bad. Um, it, you could see some figures moving about in the yard. It looked kind of looked maybe a horse was out there or maybe some people, people walking about. But you couldn't tell if it was ethereal or corporeal because of the compression of the video, of the video camera itself. So I don't know that I'm putting a lot of weight on that. It does look creepy. I'll give them that. Then... After, after the interviews and the surveillance footage, they just, they are told, Zach is told by a young lady about a cave where she thinks there's some spirits uh, reside and there's some rituals being done. 
So they go, they decide to make a trip to the cave. So they load in with a family, they get in their side by sides and they head out to this cave. Now the cave, there's a couple, there's a lot of stuff going on with this cave. But I think the biggest thing here is they meet this, this guy in the video. He's kind of like, I mean, this cat, this cat is a legend. He shows up. He's a Navajo practitioner. Now, what I understand is this is like a generational shaman type um, individual from the Navajo um, from the Navajo people, and he learns all these rituals from a mentor or uh, an elder. So he meets with Ghost Adventures. They do a protection ritual. They give him some ash to put on and all that, and they go up to the cave. But what makes this cat legend is, firstly, he shows up, he's got a samurai sword. This cat shows up to a ghost hunt or Navajo skinwalker hunt with a samurai sword. He's a legend! He's got some gauntlets on, looks like he's got a tactical knife. This cat was ready to go to work. So so I thought that was pretty, pretty amazing that the guy would bring a samurai sword. Now, I don't... I don't know if you were afraid of wildlife, why you would not bring a firearm, but maybe his um, his beliefs are not, he doesn't want to bring firearms. Maybe they want to highlight firearms in an episode. I believe they've shot pistols before on Ghost Adventures. So I don't think it's taboo. But anyway, this cat brings a sword to a ghost hunt. It is stunningly amazing. So you got to check out, the guy's name is Sean Glenn, S-H-A-N-C-L-E-N. He does have a YouTube channel. It looks like a traditional, I don't know, like like, like channel for Navajo traditional rituals and activities and that sort of thing. So anyway, let's move on. Then they had a cave up there. The cave, the, I mean, excuse me, they had a little campfire up there at the cave, which I think was a little questionable because it was very conveniently located. And then they pulled some rosaries out of the campfire. Now I own rosaries. A lot of them and I know that if I put them anywhere near a fire they're gonna pop and they're gonna melt they're gonna do all kinds of bad things I think it was just for effect you know like hey they're doing some bad things here and they were just maybe trying to uh, emphasize that point by having the rosaries there but anyway I didn't notice any fire damage on the rosaries so we'll move on from that then they go to the cave and Sean Glenn the samurai Navajo practitioner d decides there's some bad stuff in there and he wants to do um he wants to get out of there appease the spirits so he bounces he goes back to the truck the guys finally finish up what they're doing they meet him back there they throw some tobacco on the ground to appease um i guess that's something a ritual that you do to appease bad spirits so that's what they did and then sean glenn was pretty much done but you got to check him out he was pretty super cool he's mentioned um and the reddit post as well we're going to go over that in a minute then they go back and again i'm going to just rapid fire this to do what they call a skinwalker trap they got some high powered cameras out there and they have one that says it's super slow motion super 300 frames per second i looked them up on google i found one that was about that big but the one in their episode looked like a mini gun it was enormous i don't know if it had other features for night vision i'm not sure why theirs was so much larger than the one i found online I don't know if you guys know who watched the episode and, and see this this camera apparatus please tell me leave me a comment why this one is so big maybe it's because of the night vision apparatus on it like i said before i don't know but it's humongous so anyway they do a skinwalker trap it's kind of silly but they do catch they do catch some evidence during this little experiment that is pretty interesting so you got to check that out and then Aaron and Jay kind of get distracted. They go over there and they capture these lights in the bushes. Now, to me, it looks like another drone. Somebody's watching them with a drone. That's what it looked like to me. It looked very close. It wasn't far off like a UFO. So that was kind of interesting. I think it was somebody else's drone. Zach had his drone. Now, let me tell you what. This drone that Zach had was the largest drone I've ever seen. This thing was enormous and it literally looked like an aircraft taking off and it had a lot of enhanced features with thermal and all that now unfortunately they didn't really i'm not going to spoil anything because it's not really a big deal because 
they didn't really feature anything other than just flying around. But anyway, they had the thermal on and they caught some pictures, I think some video of some horses out in the field or something like that. But they didn't really catch a whole lot with a drone, which is unfortunate because this thing was a, um, it was a technological wonder. It was amazing. It was a big drone. You got to check it out. All right. So, and then once they land this enormous F-16 drone, they see some lights. To me, again, it looks like people are walking. And then Zach and uh, I think Billy take off down the street looking, trying to see, forgive me, trying to see what it is. And it looks to me like just people walking down the street. But you make your mind up for yourself when you watch it. Then they go to the Chuck Wagon Inn and they're going upstairs to the inn. And I think they also go into an upstairs apartment um, above the deli. But anyway, they, this is when they get to two more of the characters in this episode that I thought were very interesting and amusing. At least the, what we're going to call now the Chuck Wagon Bathroom Lady. She was just apparently in the deli in the middle of the night in the dark. I don't remember why she was there. But I don't remember it struck me as, oh, well, she was in there just working. Because it looked to me like when they go in and they start talking to the chuck wagon bathroom lady, she was simply just standing about the place and in, in the dark. So she was apparently in the loo doing her business. And there's a little rubbish bin next to her. And the lid starts um, rattling. And so she calls Ghost Adventures, of course, and they come running. And they go in there and they do some EMF. But I'm going to let you guys watch all that for yourself. But check out the Chuck Wagon Bathroom Lady um, sequence of events. It's pretty interesting. This is when Zach says something that really irked me. And I think a lot of other people notice as well. Where he tells Aaron to go in the service tunnel. And that Aaron has to do what he's told. Blah, blah, blah. This is the only really part in the whole episode that I thought Zach was out of control. But... For the most part, he was pretty calm, but that was pretty annoying. And then they took Jose, who was a reluctant um, participant and going upstairs, I believe, to maybe one of the rooms. And honestly, I don't remember. And it really is not relevant. I think it was upstairs in the what was the old museum, which is now an apartment or it could have been in the chuck wagon. Inn. I don't know. But either way, Jose had been upstairs to this location. He had been um, frightened by something up there. You could see Jose was obviously affected by this thing, whatever experience he had. And he well, goes in there and he literally goes in there and he's creeping about, man. I mean, this guy's really timid. And if it was scripted or acting, it was cool. It was entertaining. And then he starts crying. I mean, Jose literally starts crying because Zach is making him, Zach is making him relive this experience. And Zach, I think at one point, actually turns to the camera and goes, Jose is crying. But as an investigator, he's got to force him to go through this emotional trauma to get the evidence. So I thought that was particularly entertaining and it was sad and endearing at the same time. So yes, Zach did make Jose cry. So we had the chuck wagon bathroom lady. We had the Navajo practitioner samurai and we had Jose which all three were amazing characters in this episode. And then we also had the ceremonial master. They go back to the wall before they finish up the investigation. They go back to this obvious tourist attraction, this big wall with these paintings on there. Ceremonial master realizes that during the investigation of the two abandoned homes, the house of Hara and the power plant, which only lasted about a minute, two minutes in the episode, but they did investigate. I'm not going to get into a lot of the evidence. I'm going to let you guys see that for yourself. But apparently, Billy was affected in the house by something supposedly, I don't know, um, possessed. I guess they used the word possessed, which troubles him through the entire episode. Then they muse the wall, the ceremony master. He gets involved with what's going on at the truck wagon. They try to connect the dots with the land, the skinwalker. All the history of the land with what may be going on the chuck wagon zach's connecting a lot of dots here you guys know how it is you've seen the show before so you just got to kind of stay with it um then they go back to the 
they go back to the chuck wagon inn and the home and they do some investigation zach does a solo thing he goes upstairs he walks in the bedroom now i'm going to spoil this because this was probably one of the one of the probably biggest points in the episode so if you don't want to hear this turn away right now come back in about a minute so zach goes upstairs he goes i'm going to go do this investigation alone it's solo zach time and aaron goes all right good i don't have to go up there so zach goes up there he's walking around i think upstairs in the either in the inn or the apartment like i said and i am skipping over some of these plot points in the episode because i can't go over everything but he goes upstairs and he's walking about and he goes in the bedroom and he's basically calling out and he goes in the bedroom and he sees this single hanger in the closet moving swaying back and forth north and south and so this immediately triggers him thinking there's something really you know um supernatural going on up here now if you believe it's supernatural or not it's entirely up to the viewer he feels it's significant so he calls the guys the guys come upstairs they got the sos they're hitting the walls in the hallway they're seeing all these i mean they're mapping things everywhere right they find evidence of a, a eagle feather they say it's a bluebird but bluebird feathers are about that big when i was a kid we used to pick up bluebird cardinal feathers they were about that big this feather's about that big it's not a bluebird all right i'm just saying you guys hit me up if you remember how big or when you watched the episode how big this feather was it's not a bluebird all right so this thing is definitely either an eagle or a vulture or something something to that effect it's not a bluebird so they find a feather zach ignores all this he even says in the episode i'm ignoring all my friends blah 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 and he goes back and he ignores mapping all these figures in the hallway i mean if if you want evidence of a skinwalker invasion you got three figures mapping climbing clamoring all over the hallway in awkward uh, positions i would think that would be relevant um evidence but no he kind of ignores that they just walks right by it he goes back in the room and he has to spend some more time with his hanger so he goes back with the hanger and he's talking i think he gets some replies to the itc box but either way so they they move away from that and they're pretty much done with that they know that the ceremonial master that met him at the wall is there i think it's one of the feathers off his fan that fell on the sofa but that's just me then they of course they realize that billy now they come to the conclusion that billy's possessed and not billy i'm sorry jay so they come to the conclusion that jay's possessed so they decide to send possessed jay to another haunted location to get in a recliner where a felon had a a supernatural encounter so so he immediately goes over there gets in the recliner and goes to sleep so that's basically i don't know what that storyline was all about but they send possessed Jay over to a recliner to take a nap. That's basically what it is. So, and then they just wrap up the episode with a whole bunch of other things. I don't think I'm missing any heavy plot points here. There's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in this episode. I just do not have time to go over all of it. So, basically, they wrap up the episode. They do like a big hover map, um, hover mapping with the device, and they don't catch anything with that. And they do catch some evidence, so don't don't uh, be disheartened here. They do catch some evidence, and I I do think that um, some of it is intriguing, especially the part like I said where they have the high speed Gatlin gun out there, and I think that's pretty um, amazing what they catch. Don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on what it is. Could be some sort of um, photography un anomaly. Or phenomenon that i'm not familiar with but it does look odd i will give them that so that's basically it um they they do some thermals inside there with jay i'm sorry um yeah jay when he's napping in the recliner they they get something that is slightly compelling but i don't know that i'm on board with all of what zach's description is so basically i'm not going to be able to touch on everything that happened in the episode obviously because it's two hours long so, but what I'd like to do now is I'd like to jump into the Reddit post. I'm going to jump in the box and we're going to go to the Reddit post right quick. 
and we see if people share my opinion on the highlights of the program or the episode. And of course, it starts out with a negative comment about Zach being scooped away by a skinwalker. Um, uh, I don't know. There, there's a, there seems to be a lot of hate on Zach sometimes. Um, and then the, the, one, of the, one of the leading comments here is the eagle cry after they introduce the Navajo guy. This is the Navajo practitioner, Sean Glenn, that I mentioned. The samurai Navajo guy with the samurai sword. And it is it is it's pretty um, epic when they show him walking down the dirt road when they introduce him to the episode and they got this eagle cry. It's pretty cool. And I did forget to mention they were inside the deli. It was pretty. It was a pretty silly um, segment of the episode. They were in the deli doing an investigation, and it seems that they highlighted the most ridiculous part of it, where Billy and Aaron are asking Zach if. Um, well, Billy asked, do you, you dare me to take a candy bar, which I thought was silly in my intro. It's like they were trying to grab some free snacks. And then Aaron actually literally starts eating some crackers or cookies. And Zach's like, put it back, leave the money for it. It was kind of odd. And at the same time, they caught like a disembodied voice off in the distance. But they kind of washed right over that. And they just moved on to all this other nonsense. So I don't know who made that decision to put that part in there. It was kind of weird. It was like Zach... And then Zach had to scold them for taking food, of course. And so so the comment basically says, do you dare me to eat a candy bar? Because that's what Billy says. So then also it says, Zach giving off strong Steven Seagal vibes. I'm not quite sure what that means, other than the Native American movie that Steven Seagal made. Don't even remember the name of it. But I do remember watching it. And then they comment about Zach bossing Aaron to go in the alleyway into the service area with by the chuck wagon bathroom lady they do the emf and they find a little little hallway there and again um, i want you guys to watch it for yourself so i'm not going to get too deep into that but if you've got a service tunnel built for access to your electrical your heating your air conditioning and then you got the chuck wagon lady bathroom lady standing on the wall basically beside that entrance and you're getting emf then for me, I would say, because the, the, the building has power. So for me, I would just say, yeah, that's um, probably because you're next to a service tunnel with all the electricity. But that's just me. So you guys can make your mind up for yourself. And then it also references the two girls that they interviewed. That was pretty much irrelevant. Didn't really have much bearing. And then, of course, they go into Sean Glenn. They're making a little reference here. Sean Glenn throwing the tobacco on the ground. Like I said, in my opinion, Sean Glenn was this part of the cave was probably one of the best parts of the show, um, without a doubt. Then they have a guy uh, saying him and his wife stayed at the hotel, and then they moved on. And then the night after they um, stayed at the hotel, they saw the episode. Um, a lot of people think they had a positive feeling watching the show. Um, it says that Jay was... They, it would be funny if Jay, when he fell asleep in the recliner... If they could actually film him, record him snoring with his little nap. Um, and then it says, I'm watching, again, like I like I mentioned, I'm watching the episode now and I cannot believe Zach was more concerned with a hanger than a freaking random feather showing up. Now, again, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a big, I wasn't on, I wasn't on the, I found the feather train. It was obviously a feather off the guy's fan. He was up there cleansing the place. Looked like he dropped a feather. And again, they reference it as a bluebird feather. And this was not a bluebird feather. So, but it is, it was amusing to see Zach completely ignore his guys and all the other evidence that they were collecting so he could go in and spend some time with his hanger. So basically that's about it. Most most of the the most of the comments on the Reddit post are basically the same they're 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 picking out the same like highlights of the show that i noticed i i went through almost all these comments but it's basically the skinwalker trap zach's hanger sean glenn with his sword um just all these things are just they're they're amazing comments forgive me so there's a lot of amazing stuff in the episode. 
There's some not, there's some bloat in there. So we're gonna get out of this. I'm gonna get out of the box now. But that's basically it. I think the consensus is there was, you know, the typical Zach um, priorities here in the episode and the interviews and what they do and what they don't do. Some of it, again, I say it was bloat. Some of it was irrelevant. It was just kind of filler for the two hours. But all in all, they do collect some, what I think, some decent um, evidence. They're really good. Ghost Adventures is really good at collecting light anomalies and making a distinction between what is normal dust or what is camera flare. They do capture, I have to say, a lot of light anomalies that are very interesting and intriguing. Now, are they paranormal? I don't know. But it could be. Who knows? But anyway, but my recommendation is, yes, if I had to give it 1 out of 10 stars for my review... I would give this probably about six or seven because there is some bloat in this. There is some silliness that could have easily been removed from the episode, but it's definitely worth your time. And if you want something to watch and you want to kill a couple hours on the weekend and you just want to get into some Ghost Adventures content, I would recommend this. It's not bad. Just get on the Ghost Adventures train. Don't ask too many questions. Just kick back, get you some snacks watch some ghost adventures and just watch sean glenn with the samurai sword in the cave it's worth your time and pop in the popcorn so my recommendation is yes this is worth your time watch it enjoy it don't ask so many questions all right all right now that we're done with the observations of the episode let me point out some of the highlights let's jump into the comments Okay, so our first comment of the day is going to come from, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm just going to blast through this because I'm going to get it wrong. Coralize Benkova3449. Please forgive me for butchering that, that handle. But she says, apparently she lives near the TAPS organization, which is the Ghost Hunters. I used to be a big fan of TAPS. They are from my home state, Rhode Island, and earlier seasons, they barely found any evidence, and that made sense. Later seasons, they were finding evidence every, uh, evidence every single episode. The last straw for me was when they investigated City Hall in Providence, Rhode Island. They made sure only to film up angles of the exterior to make sure no one saw the fact that City Hall is right next to the central bus hub of the state. There's also a mobile diner that pulls up next to it every night. So when they heard voices and they said they smelled cigar or cigarette smoke, I was like, yeah, because Kennedy Plaza and Haven Brothers Diner is less than 50 feet away. She's referencing what one of the other testimonies were that the ghost hunters set up the glasses and the salt and the train went over and it shook the glasses and they were kind of having a giggle over that because they never mentioned the trains. And then also she, had, she, she states... She states that they did B-roll driving to the location and their office is basically a straight shot from the interstate and they drove around the neighborhood to do B-roll to make it more interesting instead of filming the interstate, which she, she found that interesting. It is kind of interesting. And the reason why I say that because I have to say that I've been guilty of that myself. Sometimes you go to location, the B-roll is just just not that good and you want to you wanna get better B-roll for your for your b-roll shots so you will move locations a little bit or you'll travel a different route i have to say i was kind of guilty of that i've probably done that myself um and then i'm going to move on to another comment here from this that one two eight three and again i think this is basically from the i think this is from the video fake fake or or, or the ghost shows fake uh, Mr. This That says, honestly, only a, I can't repeat this word, thinks they are real in the first place. LOL, people really need to go back to school for grade one. If they need to be told the program is fake, this gentleman is obviously from grade one. He's obviously, I think, from the UK. Just my opinion. I am not calling myself an investigator of ghosts or the paranormal, but I don't need to buy into the rubbish. Toys everyone claims are good, etc. He's talking about ghost advice um, devices. 
go sending advices. As you said, famous spots, etc. Again, my belief is that spirits can be found anywhere. You don't know where they are because you can't see them. It's all telly. That's the first clue. It's rubbish. I have used tape recorders and digital recorders and placed them on tables and floors, shut my mouth and simply waited on them, played them back and definitely heard voices, etc. Now, I've said this before myself. I'm really intrigued by voice phenomenon and EVPs more than I am with SLS, SLS and other devices that can actually create results. Hearing voices, whether it be on the static of the spirit box or, or digital recorder, is very intriguing to me because where is it coming from? Especially a digital recorder. Um, but then he's critical of people carrying around the digital recorders, knocking them about, moving around, uh, causing them to make noise, etc. The lame devices people use, especially in these so called investigations. Also embarrassing, like the mag light scam. I'm not a big fan of that as well. Um, if ghosts do exist, they do have power. They do not need you to screw the mag light. Um, he, he thinks that they, if they do have power, they can turn a regular flashlight on and off. Man up and place a real torch with a definitive on off switch, switch so they can actually do something. There isn't a single ghost hunt show I care to waste my time watching. Like the old saying goes, if it's on telly, it's full of blank. Great video, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. This That. I agree to most ex to a greater extent of your comment i replied thanks for the comment totally agree most tv programs are driven and will embellish the evidence for ratings thanks for watching now my last comment is going to be something that caught me off guard i wasn't really sure what they were exactly referencing but mr michael ball 1887 says so having no abilities to make your own video you decide to use other people's content and bastardize it so i'm not quite sure what he's referencing that i was bastardizing my reply was thanks for the comment sincere apologies you didn't enjoy the current content a lot of the viewers enjoy the commentary videos i post mostly in the summer there are, however, numerous original videos of local paranormal investigations I've done in the past year or so. Perhaps if you have a moment to spare, you'll check out some of those and give the channel another chance to provide content you enjoy and approve of. Thanks for watching. Now, again, I'm not really sure what he's targeting, what he's driving at there, but it matters not. I, I will never be able to make everyone happy. But again, to reiterate, most of my content during the summer is commentary trying to share episodes or ghost programs that I see that either I see by surprise or I'm just on a bucket list, not a bucket list, but a watch list. And then once I see them, I'm like, man, this is cool. I want to share it with the hunters. But that's how I make my mind up of what I want to share with the hunters or not. If I enjoy it, I'm like, man, I wonder if they've seen this or heard of it because there's so much streaming um, there's so many streaming services out there, so much content that if someone doesn't bring it to your attention, you may never notice it. If you're a Netflix person, you're on Netflix all the time. If you're on Prime, you're on Prime all the time. If you're on Discovery Plus, a lot of times I just watch Discovery Plus. I, I don't jump around very much because I don't have the time. So anyway, that's it, everyone. That is the comments for today. Um, Again, please leave me a comment. Let you know. Let me know what you think of the videos, of my observations of the episode. Watch the episode. Let me know what you think of the evidence. Just again, I think you need to just get on the Ghost Adventures train. Watch the episode. Enjoy it for what it is, and it's basically typical Ghost Adventures fair. All right, hunters. Thank you very much for watching the video. Staying with me through this long review. Again, like I said, it was a very long episode, so there's a lot to talk about. So do yourself a favor, jump in a comfy chair, get a snack, get into the Ghost Adventures train, and just don't ask too many questions and watch the episode. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, Haunters, be good to each other, take care of each other, and I will see you on the next one.